Do you remember playing hide and seek for the first time with your friends in your backyard? Elon Musk. Uh, some people think I'm an alien. Has figured a way to take that age old game that you used to play with your friends and make it 10 times more interesting with his company, OpenAI. Let's get right into it. I don't know, man. That's like famous last words. Before I get into things, I'd like to ask you guys to the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It would be much appreciated and we're trying to hit a thousand subscribers by September 1st. But to stay on topic, let's talk about OpenAI and what they've been able to do to revolutionize the game of hide and seek. So what the team at OpenAI was actually able to do was to build an environment in which agents or basically players on a team were playing team-based game of hide and seek. And so we had two different teams. So we had the hiders uh, indicated by uh, the blue players. And then we had the red players, which were the seekers. And so the blue players were trying to get out of the red player's line of sight and hide from them using the objects in their environment. So they had objects like boxes and ramps to help them enclose their environment so the red players, the seekers, wouldn't be able to find them. Now, the whole idea here is to see how the model and how the agents get more intelligent over time on both ends. So how do the seekers understand certain strategies over time and how to how do the hiders understand certain strategies over time in different environments uh, with different levels of intelligence so at first you know there's just random it's it's just random actions because the technique that open ai is using is reinforcement learning and reinforcement learning attributes actions within an environment a reward so every action has a negative or a positive reward that influences whether the hiders and seekers actually performed an action that is advantageous to their uh, end goal it's important to note that OpenAI said explicitly that there's no incentives for the agents to use the objects within their environment um, so the agents weren't forced to use the objects to try to win the game but obviously um, as we see their strategies using the boxes to block the openings and trying to have the seekers not come into their enclosure is the best strategy that they learned but this doesn't mean that the seekers didn't learn other strategies to try to avoid this eventually the seekers used their ramp that they had to climb over the boxes and were able to invade the little blue player's enclosure. And so we see here the strategies develop over time. As the blue players learn that the red that the red seekers are using the ramp, they now lock the ramp in place and are able to avoid the red players using the ramp to get up into the little enclosed space so this the hiders would be completely safe. Now we can see that there are a little bit more variables involved. We see that there are one to three hiders, one to three seekers, and a lot more blocks and ramps involved into the equation. And in this environment, there are a lot of more strategies that can emerge um, between the hiders and the seekers. So initially we see, again, this randomization period where they're not really doing anything and they're just kind of locking, moving boxes at their own will. And then we see that the seekers learn to chase the hiders as before and then we see the hiders act actually constructing a shelter around them to hide in from the seekers and the seekers aren't able to find them and as things progress again the seekers understand that they need to use ramps and so they use a ramp to invade into the seekers into the hiders enclosure and then after that again there's a technique called ramp defense that how OpenAI describes it where they lock the ramp in place and they're not able to use the ramp to get into the hider's enclosure. But something that's absolutely fascinating, something that really is a technique that the seekers used called box surfing, where they learned to bring a box to a, a ramp that was already locked. They got onto the box and were able to s literally surf on this box and infiltrate the enclosure of the blue hiders which is absolutely fascinating and keep in mind an agent is learning this a model is learning this this isn't the user is telling the seeker to perform this way 
we're using a technique called reinforcement learning that I've described in other videos that you guys can check out a little bit more in detail. But again, certain actions are attributed to certain rewards and with this technique and with their algorithms that they de designed in OpenAI, a bunch of different strategies can be created by these agents and models and it's truly fascinating. The final step uh, in the development of these agents was surf defense where would they they would lock every single box and the seekers couldn't do anything because if everything is locked and they created an enclosed environment the seekers can't get on the box they can't get on the ramp there's nothing they can really do so that was the final phase of the randomized environment and as you saw that the randomized environment was pretty similar to the uh, consistent environment that we described a little bit earlier Let's look at this model as you can see on the screen. So here actually we can see the policy architecture, which means how every single agent is making its decisions based on its environment. So that we see the blue hiders have a certain policy based on their position and then using LiDAR, which is essentially just their way of detecting their environment, they can make a decision. With other agents, they use another full, and all these fully connected are just referring to neural networks. Um, and so we see every single object has a certain policy that dictates how they react to their environment. And so all of that goes into um, how they react with each other because if each entity in an environment has a policy then combined they can all react to each other in real time all with different policies so they're trained with a algorithm called self play that OpenAI uh, that's how OpenAI calls it and agents can use the information about the objects around them and the other agents around them to make inferences on what the agents around them and the objects around them are going to do. So the OpenAI team found that very large scale training was important. Very large scale training was important and it was critical in the agents actually understanding the stages and the progress um, intelligence of their surroundings because for the agents to improve, they also need to understand how the policies and intelligence of their models or of their seekers and hiders are changing around them. And so that's why the OpenAI team used previous versions or less intelligent versions of the agents to train on the more advanced agents so they would understand what techniques are less advantageous and how they improved upon themselves and how to change their policy over time. So we can see by this model that obviously the more training episodes that we see, uh, the more accuracy and the better the policies of the agents are in their respective environments. Just to finish off, I'd like to explore some really cool techniques that the agents learned throughout their training process. The first technique that we described previously was actually called box surfing where again as I said before they would jump onto a box and then surf it and then get into an enclosed environment that they weren't able to reach before because they weren't at the correct height which is something that the developers didn't expect to happen and that's what's so cool about reinforcement learning is that the agents can learn really cool techniques that we never expected for them to learn. The second technique that was really interesting is a technique called endless running where the agents would just take one object and push it out of their environment forever and just go all the way outside of their environment to try to get the objects outside of the environment so that the seekers or the hiders wouldn't have access to certain objects. The third and final really cool strategy is called ramp exploration where both hiders and seekers would use ramps to run around and avoid each other and also just scout their environment and be able to understand what boxes exist in the environment and what are the boundaries of their environment. Really cool that a computer using a simple algorithm, well not too simple, could learn something so sophisticated, right? 
All in all, I think it's really fascinating what OpenAI was able to do with this hide and seek simulation. And I think it provides us a really great indication of what OpenAI is going to be doing in the future. It's really cool stuff that they're doing with reinforcement learning and their proprietary algorithms. And I think there's a lot to come from OpenAI and a bunch of other Elon Musk companies. But for now, make sure to leave a like and a comment. What was your favorite technique that the agents used in this really cool game of hide and seek? But for now, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of you. Make sure to subscribe down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.